Hello, my name is Sean Ditchko with the University of British Columbia Physics and Astronomy Department. In the last video of this three-part series, we finished off by showing the spreadsheet method for estimating the uncertainty in a calculation. We also showed the formulas for estimating uncertainty. But where we left off was saying that the spreadsheet method is actually preferable for asymmetric functions. Let's take an example to show what I mean. Suppose you have the function f of x equals tan of x. And we'll suppose that the measurement x is 88 degrees plus or minus 1 degree. You can see how asymmetric the tangent function is by looking at this spreadsheet. When you have 88 degrees, tangent of 88 is 28.6. But if you go 1 degree more to 89, it jumps all the way up to 57. Whereas if you go 1 degree less, it jumps down to only about 19. So there's a much bigger gap from 28 to 57 than there is from 28 down to 19. So the fact that the function tangent changes by different amounts for changes in the x value, that's how you know it's asymmetric. And you can also see that on this graph. Here's the point for 88 degrees, and it has 28.6. And you can see there's a much bigger gap. You have to go way up to get to the next tangent value for 89 degrees, and it's all the way up to 57, whereas going two points to the left, you go down only this small gap of about 10. So I've typed in some formulas here to calculate the difference between this value at 88 degrees versus tangent at 87 degrees, so it's about a 10 difference in the tangent, whereas between 89 degrees and versus 88 degrees, you get about a difference of 29 in the tangent. And so it's asymmetric. The function at 88 degrees is about 28 plus uh, 29 and minus 10. So you don't have a plus or minus single number like you normally do because this function is asymmetric and so it's going to be going up different amounts than it goes down for a change in the value x. If you were to take the derivative of the tangent of x and derive a formula for the uncertainty propagation, you'd find that the uncertainty is about plus or minus 14, which uh, underestimates the error by about 100% on the upside and overestimates the error by about 50% on the downside. So this uh, result from the error propagation formula is not really as good as the result you get from using the spreadsheet. We're now going to turn our attention to the uncertainty in the tabletop volume calculation. And we'll show that the uncertainty of the thickness measurement dominates. It has the most influence on the uncertainty of the volume compared with the length or width measurements. The random uncertainty in the thickness measurement is the same as for the length and width, which is about two millimeters, as we discussed in the first video. Whereas the systematic uncertainty for this measurement will estimate to be um, the measurement itself of 0 0.034 meters times the one millimeter uncertainty for every meter measured as a systematic uncertainty and that's about 0 0.034 millimeters. So the two millimeters of random uncertainty plus the 0 0.034 millimeters of systematic uncertainty essentially equals two millimeters because we only want one significant figure in our uncertainty estimates. So we can essentially ignore the systematic uncertainty. It's so small because the measurement itself is so small, only 3.4 centimeters. So you might say, well, this um, uncertainty is less than we had for the length and width measurements. They had uncertainty of total three millimeters, and this one's only two. Well, we'll see that, um, that the fractional error in this thickness measurement is going to be much larger, though, since the measurement itself is so small. So the volume of this tabletop is length times width times thickness, and that's going to be 1.066 meters length times 0 0.763 meters width times 0 0.034 meters thickness, which gives 0 0.027654 cubic meters. And we need to calculate the uncertainty now in order to know how many of these figures are significant. So the statistical version in the fractional uncertainty in the volume will be the square root of the uncertainty in the length
divided by length squared plus uncertainty in width divided by width squared plus uncertainty in thickness divided by thickness squared. And so this is the square root of 0 0.003 meters over 1.066 meters squared plus the 3 millimeter uncertainty in width divided by the width measurement of 0.763 meters that gets squared plus the uncertainty in the uh, thickness measurement which we said was 0 0.002 meters that's 2 millimeters divided by its measurement of 0 0.034 meters and that gets squared. Now I've written out each of these fractions as decimal, so it's more easy to see uh, how they compare in magnitude. And you'll notice that the, well, this is the length one, and this is the width one. And this number here is the fractional uncertainty in the thickness. And it's larger by an entire order of magnitude than either of the other two fractional uncertainties. It's, uh, it's uh, 0 0.06, basically, compared to 0 0.004 or 0 0.003. And so this is why the um, thickness measurement has such a large bearing on the uncertainty in the volume because its fractional uncertainty is so much larger than the other measurements, despite the absolute uncertainty in thickness being smaller, only 2 millimeters compared to 3 millimeters. Um, since the thickness measurement itself is so small at only 0 0.034 meters, this 2 millimeters makes a large fraction of that 3.4 centimeter measurement. Now after doing this calculation you'll find that the fractional uncertainty in volume is 0 0.058998 and we can find the absolute uncertainty by multiplying both sides by V and we'll get the uncertainty in volume is 0 0.058998 times the volume which is 0 0.027654 meters cubed. And this works out to 0 0.00163. So our final answer for volume, including the statistical uncertainty, is going to be 0 0.0276 0 0.027. Now let's make sure that the um, place values match up. So we have, this is going to be our uncertainty is going to be to the thousandth place and so the precision of our volume will also be to the thousands and so we'll stop it there and do we need to round it up yes we do we have a six there so we're going to turn that seven into an eight and we get plus or minus 0 0.002 meters cubed now we can also calculate the worst case version of the uncertainty propagation formula which will be fractional error and volume is fractional area error in uh, length plus fractional uncertainty in width plus fractional uncertainty in thickness. And that'll be each of these decimals that I've listed here, added, all added together. So I've listed each of the fractional uncertainties in the length, width, and thickness respectively. And still noticing how big this fractional uncertainty in thickness is compared to the other measurements. And we can add those all up, and we get 0 0.06554. Now let's find the absolute uncertainty in the volume for the worst case scenario, and that's going to be 0 0.06554 multiplied by this volume, which was 0 0.02765. Meters cubed, and this gives 0 0.00181, which will round to 0 0.002 meters cubed. And so it turns out that in the worst case version, we get the same uncertainty after we finish rounding as we did in the statistical version, 0 0.002. And so our answer is exactly the same 0 0.028 plus or minus 0 0.002 meters cubed for the tabletop volume. Now probably the best way to express an error is to write it as a percentage. So the percent error is 
the error value of 0 0.002 in this case, divided by the measurement, 0 0.028 meters cubed, times it by 100 to turn it into a percentage, and this is 7.14286. Well, that's silly. We should only keep one significant figure, so the error is going to be 7%. And so our final answer then is volume is 0 0.028 meters cubed, plus or minus 7%. And this percentage puts the error in the context of the measurement and tells you how big it is with comparison to the measurement itself. So the biggest lesson to take away from this example is that some measurements are more important or they deserve your uncertainty reducing attention more than other measurements. This thickness measurement, that's the bad guy. You have to reduce the thickness measurement uncertainty before it's worthwhile spending any time on the length or width uncertainties since their fractional uncertainties are so small. This thickness measurement uh, contributes the most to your fractional uncertainty in the volume. Um, and one way to reduce this thickness uh, uncertainty is to use a better measuring device, say, maybe a caliper, which will have less uncertainty in its measurements. This uh, spreadsheet is just another way to confirm to us that the thickness measurement is the most important in terms of our uncertainty in the volume. I've, uh, I have the three measured values here in the first row, and you know this volume cell has a formula saying multiply cells B2, C2, and D2. And in each of the following rows, I have the length raised to its highest amount, uh, three millimeters added. The width has three millimeters added, and then the thickness has at most the two millimeters added, and see the effect that it has in the volume in each case. For the length and the width, we go from 0.276 or so to 0.0277 and for the width also 0 0.0277 uh, or thereabouts and for the thickness however the volume measurements becomes 0 0.0293 and so this again confirms that the thickness raised to the upper limit of its uncertainty uh, has the greatest effect on the volume compared with the length or width being raised to their upper limits of uncertainty so now you have some techniques for estimating error and for propagating it through calculations. So best of luck on your labs. And thank you for listening to another video produced by the University of British Columbia Physics and Astronomy Department.